like to I like to introduce you a bit here before we go into the topic here. Uh, Mike, that, I can call you Mike, right? Yeah, of course. Right, great. You're welcome all the way from UK, United Kingdom, and you just uh, here in the studio now. I I I think you can get closer to the microphone for me, please. Yeah. Uh, you have not been on the radio via either or on uh, you know any means, but today you are here live. Uh, how do you feel before we start this? First and foremost, all praises to the Most High. Right. Shalom, family. Shalom, Israel. It's an honor to be here at GH Radio One. Uh. Thank you, Tad, for inviting me into the studio. Um, it's going to be a great show tonight. Um, the fish up is going to bring fire to the airwaves, so get ready. That's your expectation. Yeah, definitely. Get are ready you, for that. Are you, are you anticipating, like, um, do you have any fears in terms of the questions that you think the public are going to be throwing to the bishop? We are IUIC. We have no fear. Any question that comes our way, we can answer. The bishop will answer any question that's put to him. He won't run like the pastors who we invited mm. to come onto the show. Not one of them's accepted our invitation. So the bishop will plug on you know he will answer any questions and hopefully lord willing we can edify the people of ghana today right well you've been in the country for quite a couple of days now and uh when you talk to some other people right trying to let them believe what you are doing now in terms of israel united what has been their impression about your ideology of religion well the past few days i've been here when we've been pushing this truth to the people a lot of them do want to know more you know they're very keen this is something they've never heard before in all their years of living in this country you know we've been we've been taught lies we've been taught that jesus is white god loves everybody we're all equal we're all one people but when you read the bible it doesn't say that at you, all you're one of the few Ghanaians who have decided to change your uh religious belief mm. and join israel united mm. now until when did you see that the pastors in ghana were telling you lies well, I've always known, you know, I, I've been fortunate you, enough. You were not born into Israel United, are you? No, I was born, I grew up in um, in the Catholic Church. When I was younger, I used to go to the Catholic Church every Sunday, but my spirit never sat well with their teachings, you know. A, a book this thick, you can see how big this Bible is. Yeah. Whenever I went to church, they only pulled one scripture out, out of either Matthew, Mark, Luke or John. And it was always a happy scripture. And there was something wrong with what they were teaching us, so thank the most high that i didn't continue going to church when i got to an age where i was independent and i could decide for myself i stayed away from the church so you were just scooping around finding out which which uh religion or which group of people are teaching what the puzzle of the bible is in a way i wasn't actively looking but the word came to me i heard it once how did you get it well i was just on online and um i came across a video on youtube and I decided to click on it and watch it to see what it was about, you know. I watched it and I've never, the first time I saw that video, I'd never in my life seen anyone break down the scriptures. Have you met the bishop yourself before? Yes, I have met the bishop. And how did you feel? Honoured to meet him. He's a man of the Most High. You can definitely see the Most High is dealing with him and IUIC. Um, very humble, you know, very approachable for a man with his knowledge. Right. You know, very, very easy to talk to, and he's always there to help if needed. So it's an honor to be part of IUIC. All right. Um, very soon, the bishop will be joining us on our WhatsApp, I'm mean, sorry, our video chat. As I speak to you, he's almost here. And um, we're doing a, pre a prelude, just about a few minutes with Michael, who's in the studio with us here in Ghana all the way. And he's telling people how he, get, he came across the word, he was a Catholic and then he, scooping online he found some of your videos uploaded and then he never went back to where he was but uh, before I come to Bishop I'd like you to wrap up briefly so until before you saw I mean before you saw this what were you doing with your life then I was I was a lost soul I was just walking up and down not knowing who I was not knowing my nationality living day to day no hope just content with the oppression that our people were suffering from so how do you feel now that you think you found the solutions to the puzzles in the bible okay firstly i know i found of course to israel united yeah i'm 100 percent sure i found the truth here so it's an honor to know that you know the most high has chosen one particular people the people who, who across the world have been oppressed for centuries for decades decades and centuries that we find out that God's dealing with us 
and there's a there's a reason why we're the, we're in the condition we're in, and there's a solution also to coming out of the condition we're in. So for me, it's an honour to be part of this truth, but it's the same time it's a job. We've got a responsibility. Our brothers and sisters across Ghana, they don't know who they are. They think they're Ghanaian. You know, nowhere in the Bible can you find Ghanaian. You can't ah. find British. You can't find American. Mike, you, you have to hold on. We'll come back to all of that. Okay. And I and I really like Let's the way the you. Online. Yeah, we we'll get a bishop um, uh, online here live on GH Radio One. Um, as I told you, we are in the period of uh, the one two hours of uh, you know I don't know if I should call it a tough time to get to some solutions. Uh, talk of the Bible being the source and the historical facts being the source of this discussion. We're trying to link up trying to find out actually from Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United. He's all joined us here all the way from the United States of America. Bishop, you're formally welcome to the show. Hey, Shalom. Most high Christ bless everyone. It is an honor to be here. Right. Um, it's another time. This is about two months interval. I can say that uh, the last time we had two hours on radio. And then uh, we'd like to welcome you again on such a live show. I know the whole world is listening to you. Previous let me just give you the opportunity of about five minutes to address the entire world. How are we going to do this? Give them a preview of what you have in terms of message before I start with my questions here, please. Okay. Well, I'm Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. To my right, I have Officer Joel. He's my reader for today. Um, my website is www.israelunite.org. The Bible is about one race of people. The Israelites, the 12 tribes of Israel who broke God's commandments from the time of Moses and we went into slavery. We were scattered throughout the world, primarily in the Americas, west coast of Africa, South Africa, uh, eastern part of Africa as well, and many other, other places according to Isaiah chapter 11. Okay? Um, Jesus Christ is a black man who died for the nation of Israel and only for the nation of Israel. The Bible is only for one race of people. The Bible is not a book of all nations. It's a book only for the Israelites, written by the Israelites, for the Israelites, under the inspiration of the Most High God. Okay? Terrorism is on the rise. It's going to continue more and more. You thought Paris was something. You haven't seen nothing yet. America is going to get blown to kingdom come along with parts of Britain and France and many European uh, countries because of the evils that they have done throughout the world. And that's all according to the Bible. Your churches don't know this truth, okay? But it's all meant to prepare us for the second coming of Christ to deliver us from the hands of our enemies, our oppressors. You understand that? Keep referring to oppressors here as the white man, right? Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> they ain't the only ones. They're just the main ones because the Chinese oppress, okay? They're oppressors. The Japanese are oppressors, okay? The Arabs are oppressors. When you read the Psalms, the 83rd chapter, it gives you a list of all the nations that hate God and hate the Israelites. A long list. That's why Christ said in Matthew 24, you shall be hated of all nations. Nobody loves the Israelites. Nobody loves us. They hate our guts. So understand this. Expect this. Okay? Can you read that for me in Matthew 24? Watch this. Just so nobody thinks I make this up. Matthew 24, verse 9 and 10. Matthew chapter 24, verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall, and shall kill you. Ye shall be hated of all nations. For my name's sake. Christ said you shall be hated of all nations. So there was a great conspiracy to enslave us and to oppress us. Because we as the chosen people are, are meant to dominate and rule the world under God in Jesus Christ. And because of that envy, the nations all came against us and subdued us because of our sins. And we went into slavery and oppression under their hands. That's why Christ came on the scene to deliver us. You got that, Ted? So um, Christ came to deliver us, yet we did not know that he was part of us. He was black, and yet even many Ghanaians do not know wh uh, why we are being categorized as being part of the 12th tribe of uh, Israel. I want you to once again give it an explanation to the you know, literal way. 
how Ghana or some Ghanaians, you keep saying Ghana and the black community is part of Israel specifically. I want some Ghanaians listening to you right now. Take a bit of your time and explain to us how we become, I mean, we became part of the 12 tribes of Israel today okay. that you keep saying. Get me uh, Luke 21 and start at verse 20. I want to start there. Okay. Bear with me a second. Got it? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Luke 20, verse 21, verse 20. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, they know that the desolation thereof is not. So Christ is talking about a the Roman army coming against the nation of Israel in the year 70 AD. Go ahead. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. So when it says let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, many people don't know, understand what does that mean when Christ instructed the Israelites to run to the mountains. What mountains? Where? When you read Matthew 2 verse 13, it gives you a hint as to what occurred historically. Can you read Matthew 2 13 for me? The book of Matthew chapter 2 verse 13. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt. Egypt is in northeast Africa. This was prior to the Arab invasion that you see today. So Christ instructed the Israelites to flee into Africa. This is the same place the angel told Joseph to take his wife and son Jesus Christ, that's right. Jesus Christ is the son of Joseph. There is no immaculate conception. And he said, hide in Africa. Why? Because you had Israelites already there. Okay. So now, watch this. Give me Joshua chapter 15 and verse 42. 24, I mean. It might be 42. About the names of the sons of Judah. The villages. That one. Okay. Is it 24 or 42? It says Ashan. 42. Read it. Joshua chapter 15, verse 42. Limna and Ether and Ashan. Ashan was one of the villages of Judah, okay? Many of our people retain that name, and the term T, T I, means people of. So when you say Ashan T, you mean people of Ashan, which was a village of Judah, okay? So a remnant of the people retained that name. Where that? Where's that at? In Ghana. Okay, so there's many historical and biblical verifications. Okay, next thing you need to know the biblical description of Jesus Christ. That's the next thing that mo no, most people don't realize or accept. Can we get that in Revelation 1? So, Tad, you got that when I said about Africa, right? Right, uh, I'll just like to acknowledge the presence of Brother Edwards, who has just joined us here to be part of the show. And um, so, you, uh, he'll be coming in with his questions, and then he'll also be participating by some of the questions and disagreements, probably, or agreements with some of your ideologies you are raising here today on Israel United issues here. So, uh, just beware. His name is Brother Edward. He's just joined us here in the studio. Okay, okay. Right. I'm glad to uh, meet your acquaintance, Brother Edwards. Okay. Right. So so now I want to read the description of Jesus Christ. First, give me Matthew 24, please. Matthew 24. Okay. Matthew 24, and I want verse uh, 4 and 5. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. So Christ said, Take heed that no man deceive you. Go ahead. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. Many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. When you examine that historically, from the time of 1492, with the coming of Columbus and the conquistadors, you had a group, many Caucasians that came with the false image of a white man and they called him Jesus Christ. And what did they do once they had that image? They enslaved the native Indians. They enslaved many blacks from the west coast of Africa, brought them here to the Americas, enslaved us, changed our culture, changed our language, changed our identity and taught us the white man is Jesus Christ. So read it again one more time. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, 
and shall deceive many. So all the Christian pastors have been deceived, okay? Because nine out of ten of these Christian pastors believe and teach that Jesus Christ is a white man, a Caucasian man, and they have no scriptural proof for it, but they teach it regardless, okay? You understand that, Tech? question here to brother Edward, and i'll come back to you based on just uh give me a minute on that brother Edward, uh, welcome to the studio anyway thank you right um now um bishop nathaniel says that pastors in ghana and most parts of the world have been teaching us that jesus christ is a white man and then in some churches there's a picture of jesus christ painted in white hanged and people bow to it and then entirely bishop nathaniel believes that that just uh, falsehood jesus is or was a black man what do you what's your take on that okay first of all i will greet our listeners and uh, i'm glad to be part of the discussion but there is something we need to know about this in the first place god is not interested in race not at all even before the nation Israel came into existence, God was working with some people. They could be blacks, they could be white. A typical example is Job. And Job was there during the time of Abraham. That time, the nation Israel was not in existence. We can talk about Balaam, who, who wanted, who received gifts from Balak and had wanted to rain curses on Israel, the nation Israel. If Balaam was a Jew or an Israelite, I don't think he would have done that. And God warned him that these are my people. So, it means that even God started working with the Israelites, he was already working with some people. But the vision of God that he wanted humanity to get access to, that is the reason why he chose a nation and used the nation to teach the other nations. And that, that, that nation. nation happens to be Israel. Israel. Right. So, um, mm -hmm. factually, uh, that one is a fact in the Bible. That people, but yeah. some facts are misplaced. However, I'm just trying to know from your angle of belief. Mm -hmm. Do you think Jesus is a white man or he's a black man? In the first place, everything started from air. Started from air. The city uh, where Abraham's father came from. Abraham was living with his father in Ur. What was the nature of the people there? Were they blacks? If they were blacks, fine. And you can read the lineage of Jesus up to today. Okay, not up to, up to the time he was born. And you can't see that he was he was coming from africa there was somebody come yes indeed there were strangers who came into the genealogy of jesus christ but at the end of the day he was a jew and jewish jews came from abraham so how do we tell that he was a, an african and and but then you can also give us uh, instances to say that this is why i think he was a white or or you don't you don't think he was he belonged well, to any race I at think all it is not important whether he's white or black all right uh, hold on right there yeah. let me see uh bishop you hear brother edward makes it clear i, I hope you're here listening to him yes right now can you do you have any reactions to him that of course i have a lot of reactions all if right. you notice ted Brother Edwards had no scriptural foundation for any of the blasphemous talk that came from his mouth. Now, he mentioned the prophet Job, and he alluded that Job had no racial identity or color. Do, do people walk around the earth transparent or invisible? Everyone, everyone on earth has a color, has an ethnic or an, and racial background. Now I'm going to prove to you. I got to prove it. Give me Job 30, 30, please. Job chapter 30, verse 30. My skin is black upon me. So the prophet Job, Dad, said my skin, my skin is black upon me. Let me, let me finish. I, I listened to his gibberish. Now, once again, many Christians, once you realize, once they realize, Dad, listen to what I'm about to say. When they realize that we know that Jesus Christ is black, you know what comes out of their mouth next? It does not matter. 
If it doesn't matter, why do I see white Jesus everywhere? This is a lie that these Christians put, perpetrate. Now I'm going to give you the color of Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. And, and Tad, notice, I'm going to give you scriptures to back up what I say. Not a melancholy speech. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. Come on. The book of Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So Jesus Christ had white woolly hair. What's the operative word? Woolly. Wool. 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 Who has woolly hair in the earth? Black people. Read on. As white as snow. So his hair was fully white. Come on. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Now when it talks about Jesus Christ's eyes in Genesis 49, the prophet Moses said that the Messiah's eyes shall be red with wine. That's why it says his eyes were like lamps of fire. Read. And his feet. Now he gets down to his feet. John looks down at the feet of Jesus Christ. Like unto fine brass. Like fine brass. Brass is brown, Tad. But watch. Let's see if it's a light brass or a dark color brass. As if they burn in a furnace. If you burn anything in a furnace, Tad. If you burn brass in a furnace, it gets black. Hell, if you burn white rice in a furnace, it gets black. So what is the Bible describing? Jesus Christ as a black man with woolly hair. You mean none of these preachers ever read that? They've read it. They've been paid not to teach it by Britain and America and these European countries. You understand what I just said? I'm listening to you keenly. And uh, Brother Edward, what would be your quick reaction to uh, this as well? Uh, okay, my, I'm not worried. I actually appreciate the way he's trying to uplift the image of the black man. I'm a black man myself. But truth is truth. Let's look at the job that he just uh, mentioned. That is Job uh, 30. Let's start from if what he's saying that Job said my skin is black mm -hmm. down to the ground means that he is an african then let's look at this job let's start from the 30 from 27 my bones boil and res restored not then it means job's bo uh, bones are boiling like water on fire isn't it let's continue uh, uh, the days of affliction prevented me i went morning without the sun what does that mean? So it means there was no sun during that day. Let's continue. I stood up and I cried in the congregation. I am a brother to dragons. So Job's brothers are dragons. Is that what it means? No. Job is telling the situation he finds himself. I'm not saying Job is white. I said, and I'm not saying that Job is colorless. I'm saying he could be white or he could be black. But that is not important. What is important is the vision God wants for humanity. So whether Jesus is black or not, what does he stand for? That is it. Wow. Okay. So now, right. he says, I'm not saying he's black. I'm not saying he's white. I gave you scriptures that says black. He has not given a scripture to say either or. So this pastor is obviously confused. So now, watch. Why is it important? John chapter 8, verse 32. Come on. John 8, verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So Jesus Christ, a black man, the black Messiah of the nation of Israel, who we are, he said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. For centuries, the black man in America, the blacks throughout the west coast of Africa, South Africa, have been crying because of oppression. Because Britain, France, America, European nations have oppressed us mentally, spiritually, physically, and financially. Jesus Christ said, the truth shall make you free. So here I am giving you the truth that we are the Israelites. Jesus Christ, the black Messiah, came for our people. We must obey what he says. So it does... Everything matters, Tad. Everything matters. For any man to say things don't matter, he does not know scripture, and he is totally brainwashed in society today. Everything matters. Now, my question to all of you, I mean, especially you wanted to make a point on that. Y now, yeah. he is saying he's made his factual, uh, picked his facts for the Bible, proving that black matters. 
I'm in terms of mm-hmm. proving that uh, uh, Job was black according to what the Bible says. What he said doesn't mean that Job right, is tell me black. What that okay, then Job, means. Job uh, 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 if you read the uh, 30, t- 29, I am, I am a brother to dragons and a companion to owls. Are you telling me Job is also companions to owls in the bush? It is an expression of the situation he finds himself. So, so you can't tell that Job says I am black down to the ground means he's a black man. He's not talking about race here. Was it in, the, in your understanding you saying he was in, it's trying to describe his situation and not his complexion? No, it's not his complexion. It's not his race. He's talking about the situation he finds himself. No, all right, right. Are we are we getting ourselves confused with semantics here? Yeah, <laughs> a, very, a lot of semantics. Because if you notice. I, I used to be in a Christian church, so I know all the games. The game is when you come across color, deny it, deny it. But And that justifies the white image of Jesus. If you notice, he didn't mention the color of Christ. He avoided that. Okay, this is what they do. It's a game, and I learned it from a youth. When you see black in the Bible, ignore that. It does not mean that. That's what they teach us, so I know it very well. So now, I can get you more color in the Bible. Give me Song of Solomon, chapter 1, please. King Solomon of the tribe of Judah. Okay? We want verse 1 and then verse 5. Okay? Come on. Song of Solomon. 1, verse 5. Start at verse 1, then jump to 5. Verse 1. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon. So Solomon wrote the Song of Solomon. Read verse 5. Verse 5. I am black, but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem. Read it again. I am black. But comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem. I am black, but comely. Comely means handsome, good looking. So now, in Christianity, what they do, they say, oh, that's not, although it says the Song of Songs, which is Solomon's, Christianity says, no, this was a woman who wrote it. It was not Solomon. Although it says the Song of Songs, which is Solomon's, they teach us to say, no, a woman did this. I know, I grew up in the Christian church. I know every lie that comes out their mouth. Now it's time to shut them down. What about Adam? Because he said the first man came from Ur. No, the first man was not from Ur of the Chaldees. That's another misconception. Can we get Genesis 2 verse 7 about Adam? The book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Ask these pastors, what color of the, is the dust of the ground? The dust of the ground is different shades of brown, proving Adam, the first man, was a black man. But they will probably deny this and go, no, and have no scriptural evidence for what they're saying. I'm going to give you scripture upon scripture upon scripture, Dad. Watch before this day is out. All right, we are actually getting heated here. Whilst I try to pick up another reaction from uh, Brother Edward, uh-huh. uh, the point is, if race or color does not matter mm-hmm. why does it matter for some people to project theirs upon others in terms of when you go to some place why is it that if it doesn't really matter in the on the ordinary sense mm-hmm. why don't we ever have jesus christ in the same shape physical shape and painted black and hanged in our churches but who is painted black well, what i'm saying i'm uh-huh. trying to make this clear uh-huh. in terms of we're not i'm not I'm ordinarily mm-hmm. not from the biblical point of view mm-hmm. but why is it that if color doesn't matter mm-hmm. in terms of we see jesus christ from childhood he's been painted black i'm know? sorry white mm-hmm. in in our churches mm-hmm. in symbolic means and terms if color doesn't matter why is it that there has never been a mistake for anybody any artist mm-hmm. in our modern terms i mean mm-hmm. in modern terms of it mm-hmm. painting jesus christ mistakenly black what is the color of the jews well, um, I, I am not in the position. <laughs> I wanted you to react no, to the I, I, Jews. The essence, what is the essence of you, well, I'm you, trying to. There, there is something we need to know. We, here. Want, we, we, we need to we, uh, some facts. We need to now. Right. The Ark of Covenant has been discovered. Where was it discovered? Is it in Africa? It was Jeremiah who had it. He uh, 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 had it, mm. and it has been found. Where? Is it in Africa? In in Israel. I have the name, I have the documentary of how it was found. Everything is there. Right. Together with all the things that is accompanying it. I saw I, it I saw, I'm still waiting for my answer to the fact that if race was not important, <laughs> why is it that some, we have never found 
Jesus Christ in any way painted black at all. Mistakenly. There is one thing we need to know about right. this. In the first place, according to the Bible, there's supposed to be no image of God. So why is some people having uh -huh. to have that image of God? Problem. So that is the hypocrisy is, of religion. Good. That is where I want to side with my brother. Right. That I am happy the way he is uh, eager to fight the cause of the black man. But not in this way that I see it. I don't see it that it should be fought in this way. Yes, he's doing a very good job in so terms right, of the historical... Well, let me just make this but, clear. But, but, um, but, let, me, let me come in here. Let me, let me land. I, I'll let you land. You are making a point. Yeah. And I want to, you know, make sure that the questions to the points are coordinated in terms of... I had wanted to make a point. All right, go on. Let me, let me let place, you go. Yeah. God is not interested in race, in color, in pictures. And he said, have no image of me. Well, that leads me to my next one. Both of you are going to prove to me whether God is interested in color or is interested in race or how race is important in promoting our religious beliefs. Wow, this is just a question. Is Do you think God is interested in religion? I mean, race? Now I'll come to you, Bishop. Yes, God is interested in race. I'm going to give you several scriptures. Number one, get me uh i want to deal with the ark of the don't let me forget about the ark of the covenant because he mentioned it has been found and i guarantee you that that minister will have no scriptural evidence for where it was discovered no scriptures he'll s tell you something he saw on the white man's television tv so now about image hosea 3 and 4 come on the book of hosea chapter 3 verse 4 for the children of israel the children of israel which we are shall abide many days we shall abide many days without a king without a king and without a prince and without a prince and without a sacrifice and without a sacrifice and without an image and without an image the children of israel all we always had images we never had images of the most high but we always had images so the young man speaking is very wrong so now is race important was your question i'm going to answer matthew 15 verse 24 let's see what jesus christ said about race the book of matthew chapter 15 verse 24 but he answered and said i am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of israel jesus christ said i'm only sent to the lost sheep of the house of israel who is israel the 12 tribes of israel are the blacks and latinos that are scattered throughout the world that's who israel is so the race is very important now he also said, what color is the Jews? I guarantee you, the young man in your studio cannot biblically prove the white man in Israel today are the biblical Jews. He cannot do it. Ida. Yes, I can prove they are not. All right. Let me, let me, before I come to that, I would want to take yours as well. Brother Edward, what's your take on that? Yeah, uh, I want to say that um, God had a covenant with... Uh, King David, that the the kinship would never leave his family, and when David's son, that is, uh, uh, Re, uh, I've forgotten the name, I think Rehoboam or so, did the wrong thing, and God became angry. He said he would take the kingdom from him, mm. but for the sake of his father David, he will leave him with only two. Uh, 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 two of the uh, families and they are now the jews that's judah and benjamin so if africans are the jews where do we belong so you still don't get it that um what um bishop is proving that mm -hmm. he says ghanaians mm -hmm. ghana we are part of the 12th tribe of Jews. I mean, you know, Israel. Ghanaians did a certain uh, study, and I really like it. I watched that on, I think, TV3 or so. Mm. They traced the lineage of uh, Ghanaians, specifically the Akans, mm. all the way to the Middle East, and specifically Israel. So he's right but there. But it ended up is, in is Samaria. Then, then he's right there. Wait, it ended up in Samaria. Yeah. And not the Jews. All right. You had it. Um, you want to make a comment or you just want to hold on for a bit. All right, thank you. Bishop, um, yes. you, that guy you, you, didn't, me, you didn't want... You what didn't, is he talking you, about? Right. You didn't want to um, forget about something, but 
you let let's hear your quick reaction before you go to the arc the discovery of the arc okay M my first reaction is that the things coming out of the, the man's brother Edward's mouth is very confusing, non-scriptural. So it's, it's practically a waste of time dealing with him because I'm getting talk. Now, can you get me the scripture I asked for? Uh, get me the one, what you got for me? The ark. Give me the ark. I want the ark and the covenant. I just got to go on because he's not giving any solid answers to who the Jews are or anything. Come on, the ark and the covenant. Second Matthew chapter 2 verse 1. It is also found in the records that Jeremy the prophet commanded that them that were carried away to take up the fire, as it had been signified, and how that the prophet, having given, given them the Lord, charged them not to forget the commandments of the Lord, and that they should not err in their minds when they see image of silver and gold with their ornaments. And with other speech, such speeches exhorted he them, that the Lord should not depart from their hearts. It was also contained in the same writings that the prophet, being warned of God, commanded the tabernacle and the ark to go with him. As he went forth into the mountain where Moses climbed up and saw the heritage of God. And when Jeremy came thither, he found a hollow cave. So Jeremiah found a cave. He has the ark of the covenant. Watch this. Wherein he laid the tabernacle and the ark. And the altar of incense, and so stopped the door. And some of those that followed him came to mark the way, but they could not find it. Which when Jeremy perceived, he blamed them, saying, As for that place, it shall be unknown until the time that God gather his people again together. So the Bible says the place where the ark is shall be unknown until the time that God gathers his people together again. God has not gathered us back together again yet. So what you saw on the Discovery Channel is a lie. It's a lie. Now, Ted, about ancestry, one more time. Leviticus 26, All right. verse 45. Right. Listen really good to what God says in Leviticus chapter 26 about your ancestors because the concept that ancestry is not important is a lie here's the proof Leviticus chapter 26 verse 45 but I will for their sakes remember the covenant of their ancestors God said I will remember the covenant of your ancestors so what do people mean when they say uh, race is not important what is ancestry that is your race that is your race so these Preachers have to stop the lies. They have to stop, Tad. Please, make them stop. All right. I wish I could make them stop, but you are here. You could make them understand and probably decide on that as yes, well. Yes, sir. Right. Um, I will, I will come in. I need to acknowledge the presence and contributions of uh, global listeners as well. And I need to make sure everybody, those of you in the studio might even be somehow <laughs> lucky. You know, you're here. So let me just say, I have some uh, interesting uh, message from Regina listen, listener who is a white in uh, Germany and this is what she has to say on the show she said I think it's the same with the language God makes different language that uh, the people can't no more speak and understand each other but for God it's all the same language that's a point she's made there fine and then he comes to continue that uh, and with the skin is the same for God, we are all the same, but we see us in different colors. And so it's with Jesus Christ too. And then that the white people should see him white, and the black people should also see him black. And she comes out to say, because I don't know if the black people will follow a white man, neither would the white man follow a black man. <laughs> and then, so, and she concludes on saying, for, for, for me, is that color not interesting that for her color is not interesting or important i believe with my heart and not my eyes and i love the black people that's from regina lesna in Geldof in germany and i have a question another contribution on the show here from maunyo inside the united states of america in tennessee and said the middle east used to be part of africa and that is supposed to yeah. be your question. Yeah. He said, "He said you should do your research well." 
Brother Edward. He said Middle East used to be part of Africa. Not only Middle East, even Southern America. All right, used great. To be part of Africa. That's supposed to be especially a especially West Africa. Sure, I'll come back to that. And then we have this one coming in. It says, um, well, let me remind you, you can also send in your contribution on our Skype. Please ask both of them what they think about Matthew twenty-eight. I guess you're taking that down. That's from Florence, Asamoah, and uh, in U.S., uh, Atlanta, Georgia. That I should ask all of you what you make of Matthew 28, 19, verse 19 and 20. Yes. Right. Okay. Right. So I'm, I'm picking that from you, but you can react to, to all of that. Okay. And then I'll come back to you, Brother Edward. Okay. Number one, your call. I want to address that caller from Germany. Let me say this. White people lie at the drop of a dime. The white woman that sent you the email, okay, she has jungle fever. She made the first mistake and said she doesn't know if black people will follow a white god. What, has she been dead for the past four centuries? Black people have been following a white god ever since the white man uh, enslaved us and Bishop, dominated us. Bishop, I think that was a bit offensive for yeah. my listeners. Okay. So okay, you could, you okay. could, yeah, I'll that was nicer. a bit offensive. I'll be nicer. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So, now, the next thing I want to say, the next thing I want to say, she says uh, about color. When we read the color of Christ, it said his hair was white like wool, woolly hair. His skin, his feet like fine brass, as if it burned in a furnace. She heard it. She rejected it. This is what they do, Tad. They will read and hear scripture and go, I reject that. This is the devil the Bible speaks of. These Christians will read scripture, deny it, and watch this, Tad, watch this. Do you see this? Do you see that, Tad? Yeah, I can see that. Okay. This is the sketches that Leonardo da Vinci did of Caesar Borgia as the renaissance image of jesus christ this was painted in around 14 uh, maybe 83 somewhere like that so the conquistadors took that image of caesar Borgia as the new jesus christ so these christians don't know any history they don't know bible they know nothing they're giving you a lot of talk with no scriptural proof no evidence or nothing to add Understand what I'm saying. So now, where are we at? I want now Matthew 28. Matthew 28 and 20. 28, verse 19, 20. Yes. To 28. We're going to read it and then I'm going to explain it. Read it for us, please. The book of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So now, let's explain that. We read earlier in today's lesson, in Matthew 15, 24, where Christ said, I am only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, right? Now we're in Matthew 28, and Christ says, go into all nations. Why did Jesus, did he change his mind? No, he didn't change his mind. What is the prophecy about the 12 tribes of Israel according to Deuteronomy 4, verse 27? Listen very good to the prophecy. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 27. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations. Who is Moses speaking to that's going to be scattered amongst the nations? The Israelites. The Israelites were scattered among the nations. So when we go back to Matthew 28, this is, this is why Christ said this. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. So that's why Jesus sought Christ, gave license and command to go into all nations because the Israelites were scattered in all nations just like today Tad we are not only in America we're in Central America South America South Africa East Africa we are in West Africa we are in Brazil we are scattered in all nations so we must go and gather the 12 tribes of Israel according to prophecy all right I'll come back to you but I did have a reaction here 
I want to ask our brother. He's a black man, so he's my brother. Even if he's a white man, he's, a, he's my brother. Right. I want to ask him whether God is interested in only the Jews and not the other nations. Right. That's a clear-cut question. So, whether God is only interested in the in the Jews or not. Oh. Okay. Well, uh, Ted, see, this is where the confusion comes in, this question. He must first ask, you must first ask Brother Edward who the Jews are and to prove it. Ask him who the Jews are first before I answer that. Is God only interested in the Jews and not the okay. other nations? Can you speak into the microphone for me again? I'm saying that whoever <laughs> do the Jews are, be blacks, be white, whatever, Caucasians, is God interested in them alone and not the rest of the world, not the other nations? Uh -huh. Okay, so since he cannot answer, Tad, this is what I want you to see about these ministers. He says Jews, whether they are the blacks or the Caucasian, they refuse to give a definitive answer. I'm going to give you the answer. G we've already proven that God is only for your ancestors, your lineage. Now I'm going to the New Testament, Acts 5, verse 31. Come on. The book of Acts chapter 5, verse 31. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin. So God sent Christ to give forgiveness and repentance to Israel for forgiveness of sins. Now the question is, who is Israel? Israel is your people, my people, the, the oppressed that went into slavery, that went under the oppression. We are Israel. That's what he does not know. He does not know the Bible, Tad. And let me say this for the record, Tad. The white man, according to the Bible, is the nation of Esau, Edom. They are the biblical devil, the wicked, the Bible speaks of. Have a nice day. All right, hold on right there. We cannot have a nice day so easily because we have until 9 o'clock and now we're having my listeners also coming in. And, and the, the, the conversations are coming you very know what? interesting. I, yeah. I, uh, what I can see is that my brother has the burning edge mm. to prove the dignity of the black man. And it's very good. But then we must know that God is God. He created all men equal. Do you know the reason why we are black? Scientifically, there is a reason behind it. Right. We have melanin beneath our skin. And it performs a very good uh, uh, function for us. Right. Especially because we are found mostly in this, uh, a sunny area. So, this melanin protects us from the sunburns by the infrared and ultraviolet rays. So, that's a reaction to ultraviolet the ultraviolet rays. Re regeneration now, right? Yeah. So, God is not after your color. And he's talking about the uh, 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 um, uh, the lineage. Mm. I think he said something Ancestral. like that. The ancestry. God picked Abraham. And out of Abraham, he, wrote, he, he brought up a nation. And he, what, 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 uh, uh, what did he tell Abraham? He said to him, he will bless all the nations. So why is he saying that it is the white man is this, the white man is that? I don't understand it. Now are you, they not you, human you beings? You and have, are they not images? Is that, the, is that the only thing that is stopping you from believing in the ideology? No, he, the quotations he's been I mean, talking about the race. Taking, I didn't the, want to the talk about of the, the quotations he's, he's been taking about. and then explaining them. Some of them he's explaining them wrongly. And can you point that out so that we can... One of them is we, what he said... Uh, uh, about uh, Job? No, let, let's, let's, no, apart from the Job one, right. let's look at the revelation. Where he said the hair of uh, 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 Christ was as white as wool. All right, can you, and he was, can you explain uh, your as as Can you explain uh, your own? Yeah. How you would understand that, that? His hair was uh, as white as wool and uh, as white as snow. Right. And all that, you know, mm -hmm. that was after Jesus resurrected. And he has taken a new body, which is a spiritual body. And the appearance of the spiritual body is what... Uh, John was describing and not this body. What is this body? It rots. All right, I'll come back to you. Please, I want many people to participate. In a bit. I'm gonna with give the Peter, bishop more, of and it. I really like it, but I don't want to enter into racial arguments. You are not interested in That's why I'm quiet. All right, I'll come back to you, brother. Hey. Now, I have this one come from Canada, Kusuya G. He actually is calling. Please, if you want to call today, if you really want to call today. 
all over the world you cannot call us on skype because that's where we are talking to the bishop on and i don't want to lose him on there so we have an alternative number for you all over the world if you are calling us prefix with zero zero one two two nine three eight three eight zero eight seven three four and that's all over the world but then if you are calling from us of a or canada you just have to say one two two nine three eight zero eight seven three four one two two nine three eight zero eight seven three four and you can come on the show live that's how the bishop can hear you but let me just yes, read sir. something from akushia g in canada who it's has it. just said in to him what he said yeah i want to read this one for you so you can put it all together so we don't get uh, more of the questions holding please and that um, he said how does the bishop nathaniel explain the intimate relationship between christianity and the colonial process processes and domination as well as slavery that's the first mm. instant so the, how do you justify the role of christianity in white imperialism and domination that has been going on for centuries and continue to happen that's the second one he said i believe christianity perpetuate inequality between races and men and women that's from akushia three clear questions so i okay. hope if you get that you can begin to do a reaction well i agree with what your what the caller just said what you read i agree there is no christianity listen what i'm gonna say christianity the doctrine of today has nothing to do with the Bible, nothing at all. The white man established modern day Christianity as white supremacy to destroy the people. For example, Tad, ask your minister if he celebrates Christmas. Put that on the table. Next, he said, Tad, Brother Edwards said that God created all men to be equal. That is what he said. Is that scriptural or is that what democracy teaches? Democracy teaches that lie, but let's see what God says. All men created equal according to God. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Above all people they are upon the face of the earth. So the Bible says the Israelites are a special people above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So when Brother Edward said God created all men equal, that's not found in the Bible. He is taking bits and pieces from democracy, Christianity, which is the same garbage deep lie, which is a philosophy of the white man, and trying to put it into the minds of the people. And when they do that, the white man's always on top, the black man's always on the bottom. So, once again, I gave you scripture to prove these Christians don't know what they're saying, Tad. They're lying. Ask him, does he celebrate Christmas? All right, let, a quick reaction. Before I come to the Christmas, right. I want us to read Genesis 22, 18. Genesis 22, 22 verse 18. 18. Verse 18. Right. Uh, are you going to read it for us? Okay, I can read it if, All right, uh, if, if I should. Yes. Uh, if you read from KJ's Bible, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. That is what God told Abraham when he chose Abraham. And he's talking about all the nations. But he was going to raise a nation out of Abraham and use that nation work with the nation to show the other nations that indeed when god works with the nation this is how it's it is like and that is why he said they become a special people to him but to teach other nations so it doesn't mean that god has thrown other nations away and is interested in only israel all right now let's come to the uh, christianity do you I, celebrate christmas i don't celebrate christian uh, 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 christmas i don't because Christianity, uh, Christmas, has nothing to do with Christianity. Oh <laughs> All right, uh, that's a question. Please, uh, I'm going to ask my questions based on the way you... And you, I can you, give you the background I, of Christianity. I'm going to ask questions. Where, uh, Christmas, where it started right, from. Hold your fire here. I'm, I'm going to ask you questions based on what both of you are saying. Because I don't want to be confused like my listeners as well. So I want both of you to be clear as possible on, on the way I'm getting the uh, debate going on here. Uh, we all need to understand that 
the purpose of this is to make sure that people are not thrown into believing something that they don't understand at all so just pay attention and pick up the facts of it and put it together decide on your own and make sure you you you, you actually go along with what your conscience tell you based on what kind of belief you have to make for yourself right you 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 see you stand you seem to agree on some terms right you and brother edward you seem to agree on certain things or he doesn't celebrate christmas and you don't celebrate christmas but where the point is is that he doesn't put a value on each race he doesn't think in religion there should be anything to do with race whether you're black or white you all have to just believe and that's it you have to move on well that's why uh many black nations stay under oppression under the white man for centuries because of thoughts like that Okay, um, I want to go to um, Genesis chapter 17 for your listeners, because Brother Edward said, he quoted in Genesis 22 about Abraham, that in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed. The same blessing that came through Abraham was upon Sarah. I want you to listen good to what he says. Genesis 17 verse 15. Genesis chapter 17 verse 15. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarah thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarah, but Sarah shall her name be. And I will bless her, and give thee a son also of her. Give her a son. Her son was Isaac. Go ahead. Yeah. I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Sarah shall be a mother of nations. Go ahead. Kings of people shall be of her. Kings of people shall be of her. Now did all nations come out of Sarah's womb? No! So who is the people that came from Sarah's womb that would be blessed as nations and kings? That Isaac came from Sarah, and from Isaac you had Jacob. From Jacob, the 12 tribes of Israel. So the nations that are being, that are being blessed are the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, according to Deuteronomy 28, Tad, can I prove that we are the Israelites according to the Bible? Let's back up there because I believe your listeners do not I'm going to hold you before you, you try on another one. All right, I, I'm going to come to you as well. I need to make sure I balance this for all of you. Um, hello? Hello? Yes, uh, your name and where you're calling from. Please make it very snappy for me. Yes, um, but sir, from your comment, you US, let me be the um, pastor question. Me um, what? All right, you there, Canada? I'm about to run and try to meet me at church, Hello. Hello. Entity, entity, I'm in Saint Gabriel, Canada, bro. For the same year, I'm into me. We be a meet church, Chimwa. I'm a mistake, be a. Uh, you know. So, I'm about to meet Canada, bro. For the year. So, yeah, meet Canada, bro. All right, go ahead, please. Yeah. Hello. I'm listening to you, please. All right, um, Shalom, so uh, Deacon. This is Madatai from U.S. Um, hello? Yes, I'm... Yes, I'm going to speak in English. Please just go ahead with the question. We are listening to you, please. Uh, uh, sh Shalom, Deacon. This is Madatai. Hey, Shalom. Yeah, I want to ask um, Pastor in Ghana a, a quick question. Please go ahead. We are listening. Just go ahead. Just go yeah. ahead with that question. question. We are all is, listening. Why um, all the all the answers that he's saying is not coming from the Bible? Because I, how I was written, um, I said Jehovah written it, and everything they say, you know, it doesn't come from the Bible. So any time bishop asks him a question he doesn't respond in the bible and he doesn't want to respond why is that right um you got the question we'll react to it uh immediately before said, we go uh, why are you not answering your question all the things the reactions you are giving he says you're not giving it from I the bible i explained yeah. the, the very quotation he makes mm. he comes out with for example when he talked about uh, revelation chapter one and uh, that's uh, use the microphone for me please mm -hmm. that is uh the appearance of uh, jesus in the book of revelation mm -hmm. and he was talking about his hair being white as wool and all that and i said that the meaning is different it's not it's not about race because jesus after resurrection has the spiritual body 
and that is what John saw. And uh. even those those colors that were mentioned there have meanings. It's not just material thing. Remember, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. If I sit here and I quote quotations all around the world and I don't make I don't make the point, what is the use? So it isn't like you are not responding from not the that Bible. I'm not but responding, but I'm uh, I'm telling exactly what those things are. All right, Bishop. <laughs> for example, he's talking about he's talking about Sarah. Uh. <laughs> when God chose the nation Israel, mm. of course Sarah was a barren some uh, all along, and that is the reason why he decided that Abraham Abraham should uh, have his uh, her, uh, maid, so that he can she can give birth. Uh, for her stead but God came in again and emphasized that indeed Sarah would have a, a, a child and out of the child that the, the promise will be on the child but that does not mean the prophecy God gave when he started working with Abraham has changed yes Abraham will have descendants that becomes a nation but the prophecy on Abraham that through Abraham he will bless all nations still stands. So uh -huh. it doesn't mean that that prophecy means that Abraham should have a nation uh, uh, will come out with a nation and the, that is the only nation God consents. Right. We'll come back to you. You're about to jump on to Deuteronomy and then I just had you to pause on but I have a call here. Hello? Yes, hello. Hi. Your, your name and where you're calling from? Oh. Yes, it's, it's me, Mother Ties again. I just want to ask a quick question. Yeah, and that should be your last one, please, please. All right. So, so if Pastor is saying that uh, in Revelation chapter 1, verse 14, what it says there is, it doesn't mean that. Can he prove, according to the Bible, what does that mean, Revelation 1, 14? And if he doesn't believe Christ is black, can he prove in the, in the Bible that Christ is it's white. Mother, mother, Kaya, right? Thank you for 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 that. Uh, and as I said, I'll, I'll come back to all of you, please. I need to make sure that um, I'm trying to make sure that we are not le leaving some of our all of us who are paying attention to this debate. It's interesting, and we need to make sense out of it. So the callers, I am begging you again, call us on zero zero one two two nine three eight zero. 8734. That's the only way I can respond to you on uh, live because the bishop is solely on the Skype and we're not going to use that Skype handle to pick up any call because we don't want to do what we did the other time, letting him go off and come back on. It doesn't make it so smooth. So if you want to participate and bring in, either send us a typed message on our WhatsApp or the WhatsApp is plus 233-502-390-633. Jump on ghradio1.com and listen live. Send the link to somebody to join. There's still more time. We have about an hour to do here before the time is due. We are just under half hour of 8 in Ghana or uh, half hour on 20 hours GMT. And you are live on GH Radio 1. Bishop, you see, uh, um, before, I want to give, uh, you don't still have any reaction, do you? A bishop to come back on you want a bishop to that's your yeah. reaction right uh bishop you had your you wanted to start on with uh, deuteronomy yes um before deuteronomy though just like the caller that just called in he said if revelation chapter 1 verse 14 does not mean color as brother edwards says just as the pope says um then what does it mean and give scriptural proof notice how come the bible gives if he says it's spiritual how come God gives a spiritual description of Jesus Christ as a black man with woolly hair? Where is the spiritual description of him as a white man with red skin and yellow hair and blue eyes? Where is that found? How come it's not in the Bible? Hmm. So now, I'm going to move on from there, Tad. I'm going to go to prove who the Israelites are according to Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter and if, if you can give me, can you allow me four verses, Tad? Can I get four verses to read? Hold on. I'll, I'll come. I want, I'll give you time. I'll come for, for, for reaction. Um, go ahead, please. And read okay. the, those verses. I, I want to read four verses. The first one, and this is going to prove who the Israelites are. Deuteronomy 28, start at verse 15. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. 
to observe to do all his commandments and his statute which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So God told Moses to tell us, our ancestors, if you break my commandments, all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. Let's read some of these curses to prove we're the Israelites. Verse 32. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thy eyes shall fill, and thy eyes shall look, and fill with longing for them all the day long. So the one curse is that your sons and daughters will be given to another people, meaning another race of people, and there shall be no might in your hand. We didn't have the military might or economic might to reunite our people. Watch this, verse 48. Verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck, until he have destroyed thee. When you examine history, Tad, who had yokes of iron on their necks? We had yokes of iron. You have slave forts down there with images and photos of our ancestors with yokes of iron on our neck as we were sold to the Americas. Here's the last verse, verse 68. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Egypt means bondage. And the Lord shall bring you into bondage again. With ships. Where did the ships go? They went to the west coast of Africa. That's where the slave ships went. Read. By the way, where I speak unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Once you got once we got off the ships, Tad, we were sold to our enemies. For bondmen, slave men, and bondwomen, slave women, and no man shall buy you. No man was able to redeem us and save us. There's one Savior, the black Messiah, Jesus the Christ. These curses, Tad, this does not fit the Israeli man in Israel today. He did not go on slave ships. He did not have yokes of iron on his neck. His sons and daughters were not uh, renamed. That only happened to us. We are the Israelites, according to the Bible. That's it. Only Africans that were enslaved. All right, who else, according to the Bible? According to the Bible, the Israelites who went into slavery. Have you forgotten about Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar? Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah. When uh, when Daniel, Dan Daniel and the rest, they were all taken up. And I remember, uh, um, uh, but these are individuals, named, these are individuals. The whole nation was taken up, and Daniel and his other friends I think there were four Daniel, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and the rest were taken to the king's palace. Have you forgotten about the prophecy that they will stay there for 70 weeks? That is slavery. Right, hold on. And not just that one. Right. No. Okay, so, we'll come so, back to you. We're talking about hmm. Africans being enslaved. It's true, Africans have been enslaved. But you can't say that because Africans were enslaved, they are the Israelites. It is within a context. Uh, uh, and it let must me fit. check who is on my line. I'll come back to all of you here. Hello? Hello? Yet your name and where you're calling from and straight to your question. We are listening to you. you know All right. My name is Florence. I'm calling from Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, my question is, uh, according to um, Genesis chapter 1, verse 31, God pronounced all his creation as good, right? So it doesn't matter white or black. He pronounced them as good. So why, um, uh, why uh, do we have all division among us? So if this division that uh, we are having, this problem we are having right now, isn't it causing by we human beings before God created uh, all of us, black, white, and he pronounced everything as good. So this division that we have among ourselves now, don't we think it's God, uh, I mean, us, who are causing all division? That's my question to all the pastors uh, who are doing this work. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Florence, for that. that uh, so if you want to join us with your question that troubles you upon all the things that you are hearing, listening through the radio, just give us a call on 229-380-8734. 229-380-8734. Or go to gh1.com. This number is there. If you are calling outside the USA, 
uh you know in europe across is zero zero one two two nine three eight zero eight seven three four this number is free for those of you in the u.s of a and canada um i'm i'm all right one minute please in the first place you know that i just returned from yes yes i wasn't much prepared to for uh, this topic right if i knew this you see i had been asking what was the topic what was the topic i would have prepared with all my quotations to come and support all that I w I'm, I'm talking about sure but it, i just came home and you called me all right no problem about right that then. but then but what i want to say is that mm. god is not for race racism you, the reason why we have different colors it's not because God is uh, interested in some color and hates another color or he has. No. Can you, can you he created man in his image. Are you man? Whether you are white or black, you are created in the image of God. All right. One minute. Yes. Yeah. 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 Brother Edward, um, Shalom Bishop. And Brother Edward, you've um, stated on several occasions that we're all equal. Can you get close to the microphone for me? Can you can you please, Brother Edward, um, mm -hmm. show us a scripture that shows that uh, everyone Hebrews, is okay. equal? I will uh, talking about. Uh, be, uh, I will say that I want us to read something that shows that when God was talking about what He has for man, He was not talking about a race or something. I think Hebrews two. Uh, oh, 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 all right, uh, I got, I'm oh, picking up a caller and then I'll come back to those two. So please just give me a minute. I'll, 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 I'll come back to all of you. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, uh, please make uh, your name and where you're calling from your question less than a minute, please. Go ahead. Well, uh, my name is Justice. I'm calling from Tokyo. <coughs> I, I heard Brother Edward saying they found the uh, Ark of Covenant in the uh, is right and all the things in it is is intact and i i had a friend in ethiopia and there's a place called alabari where they have most of the things in the act of act of the covenant in that place called alabari and they have a document on the each where you can find it out there so i i find it strange that is one thing. And two, like he was saying, I, I think I, 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 I agree with uh, Brother Tenny because most of the descriptions over here he's talking about is something we don't take notice of those things, you know? We read it and just go out over it, but he's talking about paying attention to those things. And I think it's very to help the black person to get out of that inferiority compressed we find ourselves yeah that is my uh thank you for own. maintaining it that brief and uh i appreciate that when you come you just have even if it's a contribution make it a bit snappy for me to be able to continue right you were making a point i still have uh, some i'll come to uh, bishop natana but all of you as i said i always have to give you a few minutes and then go for uh that so you want to take a minute and then i'll go to brother edward for uh, i'll be very to, quick i just yeah like be, I said a be quick ago, please please um brother edward if you could please show us a scripture that shows yeah, that we are that, all that equal what, yeah, uh, yeah you, you said hebrews uh, to all right so when you find you come whilst you're doing that i can't waste my i'll go back to you um bishop nathaniel do you have some reactions uh, people said a lot of things Ted. yes a lot of people come said on. a lot of stuff great now Somebody, one of your callers said that uh, God wants all the, if I could be misquoting her about all nations should be together. I, I might be misquoting the young lady that just called, but uh, I think her name was Florence. But let me help her out with biblical understanding in Deuteronomy 32. Did God want all nations together? <laughs> Deuteronomy 32, what verse? Verse 8. Verse 8. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 8. When the Most High divided the two the nations. When the Most High divided the nations. Go ahead. Their inheritance. When he separated the sons of Adam. When God separated the sons of Adam. Go ahead. He set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. And he gave the children of Israel the choice land. So the Bible says God separated nations. So what are these people talking about? 
They are talking democracy. They are talking Babylon the Great's philosophy. It's not biblical what these people are saying because God says he separated the nations dead. But the people are fighting against what he says all come together. You know why? Low self-esteem and white supremacy. They love the white man so much. They are will just like uh, here in America. We were willing to get beat by the white man's dog sick on us just so that we could go and sit on the same toilet with him. Just so that we could sit in the restaurants with him. But God is revealing that is foolishness. We are the Israelites, the greatest people on the face of the earth. And we must repent of our sins. Come on, come on, come on. Do you, are you not going to react to the question? Uh, I want, uh, he, he yeah, he wants you to give a quotation in the Bible that makes uh, clear this, I mean, that makes all equal, you know, giving equality God to all people. God talks about man. God talks about man. And, not and, a race. And, not, you mean and there's not inequality Hebrews, or equality Hebrews in the Bible? Two. Is that what you're saying? Let's read from Hebrews 2. Right. 7 says, Thou, uh, uh, I want to start from... Well, whilst you are doing that, let me just say hello to someone on the line. Just hold a minute. Hello? Let's start from you. Hello? Just, just hold on a minute for me. Hello? I'll come back to you, brother. Sorry about that. Hello? Can you hear me on the line, please? Hello? Sorry, but you'd need to join us again. Can yeah, please go that? ahead. Yeah. Hebrews 2, 6 downwards. But one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man? that thou art mindful of him or son of man that thou visits him thou madest him a little lower than the angels thou crowned him with glory and honor and and did and did set him over thy works of thy hand thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet for in that he put all in subjection under him he let nothing uh, he let nothing that is not put under him but now we see not yet all things put under him but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor and it continues he's talking about man not a race so why do you talk about race god is interested in man who was made in the image and likeness of, of God? Who was made a little lower than the angels? How was Jesus, uh, whom was God likened to Jesus? Is it man? So why do you think about race? Right. Hold it right there. Let me talk to someone on the line. Right. Bishop, I'm coming to you sincerely, please. Hello? 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 All right. Hello? 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 Sir, a bad disorder can it treat maybe Sano, a Becca? Why? Who can that feel for? Matthew, can that feel you? Quick one, please. New York. I'm a person in Busa, I pass an organ, Pastor Edward. But I quotation no quote here, and the because quotation I make a new who is a young concrete thing at the same. All right, thank you. May, may I would need to react to you people. Sorry, but I need to just be in control here. Um, Bishop, quick one. Yes. Yeah. Um, or say uh, he said he doesn't understand what Brother Edwards quoted, so that uh, is not a question at all. <laughs> no, 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 no. He said he doesn't understand the quotation. Doesn't mean that his quotation does not exist in the Bible. Please. He said he doesn't understand the quotation he just read from the Bible or try to explain. Doesn't mean it doesn't exist in the Bible. Clearly, let's make that. But you, I said, we it, don't see it. You again. Give it again. Give it Hebrews two six downwards. Yeah. I'm talking about when God is talking about Jesus. And human being and he did not liken them to any race thank you right there right so um that's what Akwesi said he doesn't understand okay he Hebrews 2 man. is talking about man in the person <laughs> of Jesus the Christ the black Messiah that's all it's talking about he uh, Ted uh, what's his name brother Edwards is still trying to navigate around what we're bringing out like for example we just read in Deuteronomy 32 that God separated the nations and he set the bounds of the children of Israel as the top nation. We also read in Deuteronomy 7 and 6 that God set the Israelites <coughs> above all nations. Now I'm going to show you that the other nations are nothing in the eyesight of God. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 17. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 17. All nations before him 
are as nothing. All nations before him are as nothing. Let's read on. And they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. Do you hear what God says? The nations are nothing to him. Nothing. So we love to glorify the white man. The Bible says these nations are nothing. But let's read on. Verse 18. To whom then will you liken God? Or what likeness will you compare unto him? Start up at 15. I wanted 15. Start up at 15. Verse 15. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket. The nations are like a drop of a bucket. And are counted as a small dust of the balance. How much does small dust weigh on a scale? Nothing. Go ahead. Behold, he taketh up the isles as a very little thing. The islands are a little thing to God. Go ahead. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn. Lebanon is not as sufficient to burn as a sacrifice to God to be his people. Go ahead. Nor the beast thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. Go ahead. All nations... Before him are as nothing. The Bible says all nations before him are as nothing. When you read the Bible, Tad, only the Israelites God loves. Romans 9.13 says, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Esau is the race of Caucasians. God hates them. Can you tell Brother Edwards that for me, please? I have a question for you, Brother uh, so no. This is it. The question is, you said... Ashantis in Ghana. We have over 46 to 56 tribes in Ghana, right? And you said the yes. Ashantis are the Israelites, but the Ashantis alone don't compose Ghana. I want you to tell us that all the people that live in Ghana, and when you say the Ashantis are the Israelites, and in a, another context, Ghanaians belong to the tribe of Israel. I am a bit confused yes. because the, the, the other tribes, what are they? Okay. In Africa, for example, you have many tribes there. But along the west coast, south, and one portion of east, the Bible describes the Israelites. That's why I ref always reference the slave trade. How the slave ships went to the west coast to get the Israelites. West coast, south, and a portion of the east. That's where they went. So we know, based upon that historical fact, and according to the Bible, that the Israelites are scattered throughout there. Now, it's all Africans... Israelites? No, all Africans are not Israelites. Neither are all Americans Israelites here. Okay? But that's why this whole walk is by faith. We have to return to the Most High, bethink ourselves as Israel, and repent before he comes back. Okay? He wants a faithful seed of Israel. That's what God is looking for. Okay? Hello? Hello? Yeah, it's your name and where you're calling from, please. Yes, um, my, my name is Kwajo. I'm calling from Chicago, U.S. Right, to your question straight out. See, can can I, uh, Bishop Most High Christ and Bless? Yeah, go ahead. I have a I have a question for um, Pastor Edward. Um, I was reading Ro uh, Romans chapter nine verse thirteen. Can he give me understanding of Romans chapter nine verse thirteen? And number two, I am a chance too, and I know my Israelite. So I don't know what he's talking about. And All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me just give it to you. I'm trying to let the bishop explain what you are saying right now, the essence of it. You said you, say you are an Ashanti to you know you are Israel. That's correct by what the, the Bible is talking about, Ashanti, and then referring that the Ashanti is a tribe in the in in the tribes, right? How about somebody who is a Frafra in Ghana? Is he um a, a one of them or not? Yes. No, hold on. I just uh, well, you can you want to respond for the caller, please, Bishop. Yes. All right. Uh, yeah, I hold on. I still don't get it, so I'm coming there. The debate is turning to that level, right? Um, I couldn't write that. He um, said Romans. Romans. Do you know the quotation, please? Right, uh, Bishop. Let's go ahead, please. Yes. Yeah. Um, you see, as I, I said, as I said, as I said, um, I'm trying to make a, a, a perfect understanding here myself. Here, that you you are you, you can only relate the biblical explanation of Ashanti, which is actually in Ghana, in the Bible, yes. right? Yes. But as of the other tribes that are found in Ghana, do not have any biblical relation to being part of the e tribes in Israel. Right. That's why, if you remember, when I read Deuteronomy 28, okay, where the, mo for example, Deuteronomy 20, read verse 37 about our names being changed. The names of the, of the Israelites would be changed according to <coughs> prophecy. Deuteronomy 28, verse 37, please. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 37. 
And thou shalt become an astonishment. And thou shalt become an astonishment. A proverb. A proverb. And a byword. A byword is being called outside of your God-given name. Just like Tad, today we are called here American blacks or African Americans. Okay? So what I want you to see, can you find African American in the Bible? No, it's not found in the Bible. Like Haitian is not found in the Bible. Just like many of the tribes throughout the West Coast are not recorded in the Bible. It's just key factors that the Most High left for us. These are clues. These are clues to letting us know where the Israelites are located today. You understand, Ted? Uh, yeah, um, once I once had um, a musician, uh, was Miss Bell. She is a popular musician in Ghana. She said she belongs to Israel. She comes from Israel, but her ancestors is the guns, right? Okay. And she says tracing the guns, the guns belong to the uh, to they come from Israel, right? But here is it. I don't see guns in the Bible. But we can only find Ashanti in the Bible, according to what right. you, you read to us, the tribe of Ashan. Mm -hmm. So I'm so we cannot find African American in the Bible. That's what I want you to understand. It's not in there. But we know that the ships came from the West Coast. Like we read in Deuteronomy 28 to 68 about the ships who came from West Coast. Where did they go? They went many places, particularly here in North America. So we know that we fit prophecy. We fit scripture. Okay, so that's how we know we are the Israelites. So when it comes okay. to Ghana, no, the tribe doesn't matter. Is that what you're saying? Yes, that is what I'm saying. When it Don't comes to Ghana, the tribe. the tribe doesn't matter. That's right. It does not matter. Once there was, believe. Once there was believe slave trade that. in the country, right? Yes, believe. <laughs> believe. That's all you got to do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, 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 Romans, Romans 9.13, 9, explain. Yeah, go ahead, please, uh, Brother Edward. As it is written, Jacob I love, uh, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. You know what? What happened between Jacob and Esau? Esau sold his birthright for food. That is what Esau did. And that is what God hated the most. To sell your birthright for food. Do you know the birthright of uh, Esau? He was supposed to be the heir to his father. And he was supposed to take over the promise. And yet he sold it for food. And that is why God said he had that. So not because he hated him. What did when that happened? And Esau went to his father. What does that puzzle mean in the Bible? For? It means that he hates anyone who desire for the flesh than the spiritual things. The promise which God gave to Abraham moves from one generation to another generation and it got to the turn of Esau who was supposed to take over but he sold it for, for, for a morsel of meat right. right do you do you have the same sense of it in the puzzle explanation Bishop of course not. that was that was Christian gibberish <laughs> <laughs> he said God hated Esau because he gave up the birthright that is not true when you read verse 11, I'm going to read verse 11 to show you it had nothing to do with what Esau did. God just hated him. Here's the proof. Verse 11. For the Romans 9 verse 11. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil. So the children not being yet born and having not done any good or evil. That the purpose of God according to election might stand. That the purpose of God according to election <clears throat> might stand. Not of works. Not of works. It had nothing to do with what Esau did. Go ahead. But of him that calleth. But of God that calleth. Go ahead. It was said unto her, The elders shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. So now, the question, Tad, who is Esau according to the prophet prophecy? Genesis 25, 25, watch. I'm going to prove who the white man is. I know the pastor loves the white man, but I'm going to show you he's the devil. Genesis 25, 25. The book of Genesis chapter 25, verse 25. And the first came out red, all over like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. So the twins that were born, the first one that came out, it said he was red all over like a hairy garment. In the south, we call the white man rednecks. 
We call them rednecks. Why? It's not just their neck that gets red. When they get in that sun tan, they're red from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet. The blood shows through their skin tan. They are the red nation. They want us to call them white to, to implicate that they are white and pure. But God says they are red. And you understand that? Watch this. Here's further prophecy about Esau, what he would do on the earth. Genesis 36. Genesis chapter 27? 27. I'm sorry. Come on. Verse 38. And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. What are we about to prove? We prove that Esau's red, the red man which you call white. Here's the physical prophecy on what he would do in the earth. Watch this. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. So one of the blessings on Esau is that he would dwell on the fatness of the earth, means the best places on the planet. Watch this. And of the dew of heaven from above. Come on. And by the sword shalt thou live. The prophecy says Esau shall live by the sword. So what red nation lives by the sword on earth today? This is the white man. Can I further prove it, Tad? You best to believe I can further prove it. Get me the book of Obadiah. I'm going to show you that the white man is Esau that God hates. Obadiah, chapter 1, verse 1. Come on. The book of Obadiah, chapter 1, verse 1. The vision of Obadiah. Thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. Jump down to verse 3. Verse 3. The pride of thy heart have deceived thee. The pride of Edom's heart has deceived him. Go ahead. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. The word Caucasian, most people don't know where that word comes from. It comes from the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. That's why they call themselves Caucasian. That's what it means when it says, Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rocks. Go ahead. Whose habitation is high. Go ahead. That saith in his heart. Who shall bring me down to the ground? Who shall bring me down to the ground? Because Esau, which is Edom, would have power in the earth. Watch this. Thou that exalted thyself as the eagle. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. What is the symbol of America? The eagle. What was the symbol of Rome? The eagle. What was the symbol of Britain? The eagle. Watch this. And though thou set thy nest among the stars. Who set their nest among the stars whose symbol was the eagle? Who did that? The white man, 1969, when he landed on the moon, he said, the eagle has landed. So what have we proven? Here are the clues, Tad. Esau would be red. Esau would live by the sword. Esau would set his nest among the stars and exalt himself as the eagle. Who is that? The white man of today. He's the red man who lives by the sword. He's the red man who went to the stars and said the eagle has landed. The white man is Esau that God hates. Right, do you have a you know reaction what? to that? Well, these come things back. that he's talking about, it really marvels me. Mm. Yeah, because it is totally out of place as far as the word of God is concerned. Out of place, totally. And you know, there is something funny that he, he, he mentioned. He was talking about the uh, Israelites being uh, Ashantis being the Israelites. I'm also an Ashanti. I come from Kumau, and in fact, from the royal family of Kumau. So I am really Ashanti. Mm. So if you talk anything good about Ashanti, I should be happy with it. But truth is truth. The fact is, now if you are saying that indeed because of the slave trade, it uh, the Ashantis and for that matter Africans who were uh, taken up are the Israelites. You are now saying that Ashantis. Do you know what happened? The slave trade. What happened in Ghana here, or what happened in Africa, West Coast here? Most of the people. Do you know that the Ashantis were fighting and uh, and and uh, uh, catching people, enslaving people, and they were sending them from the hinterlands, from the northern region and beyond. So if you are talking about the Ashantis, only few Ashantis were, 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 were taken away. A majority of those who were taken away from the northern region, the northern parts, you can read about the, Ashan the, the, the history of Ashantis and you get to know about the Ashanti kingdom and what took place. So if you are saying that the Ashantis are the Israelites and for that matter, we are Israelites, I don't see how it fits. 
Because the Ashanti kingdom is that we have Eves, we have the Gans, we have the uh, the Frafres, the Nanumbes, the Konkombes, the Dagombes. They are all there. And they are all blacks. Are they all, uh, all Israelites? Or is it because Africa was in uh, enslaved and that is why they become Israelites? All right. What clearly, Bishop, clearly, uh, but Edward doesn't get the concept you are yeah, bringing yeah, up yeah, here. Yeah, so, um, yeah. do you uh, have any reaction to that? Let's have a reaction, Tad. So, number one, all like I said, all African, <laughs> all Africans are not Israel. I said that from the beginning. The seed of Israel is scattered throughout the West Coast, South, and parts of East, just like in America. Everybody here in America is not Israel, but the seed is here. That's why I said this whole walk is based upon faith. We must believe. And as Brother Edwards said, he said he, he, he does not believe because it didn't fit. But what he does believe, what he does believe, Tad, is what his masters say. I'm going to show you something in Micah, how these pastors are. Micah 3, verse 11. Listen good. Micah chapter 3, verse 11. The heads thereof judge for reward. The judges judge for reward. And the priests thereof teach for hire. And the priests teach for hire. Go ahead. And the prophets thereof divine for money. And the prophets divine for money. God is letting you know that these corrupt ministers of today do all that they do for money, for hire. That's why they out preaching and spewing lies about God, Jesus Christ, and the Israelites. They have been paid. That's what tithe is about. The steady income, 10%, pay me for this lie that I have taught. Pay me, please. These ministers have to go. Right, uh, you're still live on GA Radio 1, and this is the Israel United uh, show that is going to end in about uh, 27 minutes here on the station of GA Radio 1, and we're having the bishop all the way from his base in the United States of America, reaching you live by the kind courtesy of GA Radio 1 here. Well, we'll still continue to uh, accept your messages, not your calls here. Uh, go ahead, please. Mike, yeah. just a quick question following right. up from what the bishop just said, that right. scripture. Just a quick question to um, mm -hmm. Pastor Edward. About I'm not Pastor. <laughs> I'm my brother. I'm a Christian. Sorry, sorry. I, don't right. belong, I don't have any church. I, don't have a I teach the scriptures as a Christian. Right. I, I have never taken any tithe before. I have never... Uh, I don't know. Have I ever asked for any no, no. Uh, uh, assistance so. from my program? <laughs> no. I don't no. Think so. Yeah. So okay, just a little bit question. of that. So you, clarif called, uh, you mentioned Hebrews two six to nine, explaining that that that's the scripture that says we're all equal. No, I'm saying that he's talking about man and Jesus, and he never mentioned any race. Okay. So God is not talking about one race being more equal than the other. He chose the nation Israel and made them a nation that he will work with so that he will use them to teach other nations about the intentions of God. Yeah. And that is why the nation Israel became so unique. And even the nation Israel, whenever they go wrong, he punishes them. To show that this is what God is. Okay. He will be punishes. So just back to your original. Your, just quickly. Sorry, Bishop. Just back to your original question. You mentioned that we, we're all equal. Do you have a scripture that's clear that says that every race or nation on this planet is equal? Can Go to Genesis. When God created man, what did he say? He created man in his image. But did did he say he created a certain race in the image of God and others less? Are you man? If you are man, then you are in the you are image of God. Right, Bishop. We are still. Uh, are you done with the questioning? Yeah, and the all right, Bishop. Do you want to see the? These are the reactions. Just Mike asking uh, Brother Edward about it. That uh, uh, about all along. You see, Brother Edward does seem to let you know that race does not count in the kingdom of God. Exactly. That is concept about that. Jacob and Esau. God says, I love Jacob. I hate Esau. So what? Right there. Your uh, Christian uh, Edwards is wrong. We also read Deuteronomy 32 where God said he separated the sons of Adam. He divided the nation. So once again, the pastor is wrong. I mean, the Christian is wrong. Brother Edwards does not know scripture. So now, 
Watch this, Revelation 2, 9, for the Jews. Those that th say they're Jews in Israel are the synagogue of Satan. I'm going to prove it. Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. I know thy works, and tribulation, and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews. I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews, like in the land of Israel today. And are not. And are not the Jews. But are the synagogue of Satan. But are the synagogue of Satan. So, what that alone proves that God is against the race of people that say they are Jews. So, once again, Brother Edwards is mistaken. He's quoting the Pope. He's quoting lie after lie after lie. I'm sorry, Brother Edwards. I love you, but you are mistaken, dear brother. All right, um, you're still live on the show. Israel United in Christ, brother Nathaniel in USA, and then Mike here. Now we have a few minutes to wrap up on the show. We're just uh, uh, going to wrap up at nine, half nine here on GH Radio. My name is Stadios Haroon, and uh, you're live on GH Radio 1. This comes your way. This is by two months interval, and I believe that you're making a conscious effort to not get yourself confused, but get yourself identified as who you are in terms of okay. your beliefs. And um, that's why we are having these questions and debate coming in and off. We have had to invite some pastors in Ghana. None of them turned up. About five letters were sent out. None of them. But then, as you see, Brother Edward is here, and he's, he's not an ordained pastor, as he said clearly, but he's a believer and he's a Christian. Is that right? Yeah. I want to make a point here. Okay. Uh, our brother is saying that Revelation 2, 9. I want to read that. And he says, um, uh, Revelation 2, 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogues of Satan. And he says, he, this is... Uh, said on who the those who are the Jews today, so called the so called Jews. But it is one of these so called Jews that received the message. John on the island of Patmos, <laughs> one of these so called Jews, so uh, got the message. So, 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 right. so that's uh, that's all right. Uh, so you want to make a reaction to that, right? Yeah, I'm gonna. I want to react. Sure, let's Tad, go. Can you find me someone that knows the scriptures to get on? Bring the Pope. I want to talk to the Pope. Let me talk to him. If you can invite the Pope, I'd rather talk to him. Now, the on the island of Patmos, yes, John got the revelation that there would be people who would call themselves the Jews. Jesus Christ said to John, they would not be the Jews, but they are the synagogue of Satan. Who is that prophetically today? The white man in Israel is the only group running around saying they are Jewish. And, Ted, for your listeners, the term ish, I-S-H, the, the suffix, ish means pertaining to or somewhat like. They're saying, when they say they're Jewish, they're saying they're not the real Jews, but they are somewhat pertaining to the Jews. Because why? They converted and stole our identity. That's what they did. And I can prove that with more biblical scriptures, Ted, to prove this prophecy. All right, um, um, I'm going to have to ask you questions that uh, you don't have to react to because we are finally getting to the end of this. And um, uh, I know that I wish we had this going on for six hours, but for want of time, we just have 20 minutes to wrap up on this. And I'll be giving you. And I know, brother, brother Edward is trying to leave this. He's about. He has Tell to go. Don't leave. Tell no, he has to go. He's at first with time. He has to go, but before. Uh, you know. You we, know. Uh, you uh, have uh, to. It caught me in the way. Uh, right. I have Actually, other tomorrow I have a presentation. Sure. I so, um, so we would like you. I'm going to give you two minutes. I'm going to give you two minutes to um, finalize your okay. concept of that. Yeah, what I want to say is that uh, we'll thank you I for appreciate coming the effort of uh, brothers. But then, if uh, I know that they are seeking to redeem the glorious image of the black man. Right, uh, we back here, but through the line, and uh, we apologize for the hitches that are just happening to us in the last quarter of the show. Bishop, um, can you hear me? 
Yes, sir. I can hear you. All right. Sounds good here. As uh, very good here. And sorry for that disappointment on the sky. But let's let's try to. Um, actually, we're gonna have to give you about ten minutes instead of t uh, seven that's left now. Ten minutes to let's wrap up on everything that we're talking about. Okay. Uh, let me begin by saying our website is www.israelunite.org. And uh, let me uh, also reach out to Brother Edwards and say that I do love him. I know he's trying in the Christian lives, but uh, we are here for him. And as I stated, the seed of Israel is scattered throughout West Africa, South Africa, parts of Ethiopia, and North Central South America, to say the least. Deuteronomy 28, verse 64, said the seed of Israel would be scattered in all nations. So, Matthew 24, and verse 14, Christ said, one more time, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. When this true gospel has been preached throughout the world, Tad, I want all your listeners to understand. Then shall the end come. The end will come then. Okay? Yeah, I can hear you. That was a nice switch. <laughs> All right, so um, we like the... It's much clearer being on the Skype as well. But then um, I believe that with time... We'll be doing quite uh, some some of the questions I still have is just for want of time. I wish I could still ask some developmental questions out of the debate. I still have some questions I need clarifications on. So I believe if somebody wants to contact you privately and um, get some answers to some things that person doesn't actually understand yet, what? How would the person get in touch with you? Uh, they can visit our website at www.israelunite.org. That's through email. Or they can call me at 718-303-9655. Tad, terrorism is going to rise and it's going to escalate. Right. It's going to get worse, according to prophecy. I wish Brother Edwards had stayed so we could discuss that. I want you to say that in terms of people in listening to us, many of them. You Last week in our preview, you tried to throw more light on what is happening is not supposed to be surprising to the world because there's a prophecy that is taking part that is taking place um, yes uh what what we would expect more from the bible in terms of terrorism uh i think i want the bishop to give a final response to this so if you can call us on the line and then we wrap up on there we will not have to waste our time on the skype anymore so just be sure if you're listening to me or if you can send him a quick message to connect us here i'll give him some just about two minutes to respond to this on on the phone please and that uh the question still stands and uh people who want to get to understand stuff connected to the bible and that's what we believe in all of us but then bible as it is puzzle very tough puzzle an ancient puzzle, difficult to crack, and it takes just a few who can be blessed with the understanding of it. But then, your, your, your. <laughs> Hello, Bishop. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Thank you. I wouldn't worry you on the Skype anymore. Please, just rea make your reaction on the phone for us, please. Thank you. Yes, sir. Great. Are you there, Ted? Yeah, I'm here. And um, if you can hear me, you are about to tell us your reaction or your response to that before we wrap up finally. Yes, Romans eight. Come on, Romans 8 verse 16 The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit That we are the children of God The spirit bears witness with our spirit That we are the children of God See, this whole walk, Tad, is spiritual We all want, we all want records Do you think the white man is going to say Okay, here are the records we have on who So he's not going to do it So that's why Christ said This gospel must be preached those that believe Tad will be saved, those that are waiting for DNA scientific proof, they're going to stay here and die, okay? Because there will not be any, okay? And you know what's funny, Tad? Nobody ever asked for proof that Jesus Christ was white. But when we bring the proof that he's black, everybody says, I need proof. No, you don't. This is a walk of faith, Tad. This is what I want all your listeners to understand. The gospel is going to go throughout the whole earth. You will either believe it or reject it. It's one of those two. 
just like here in America. Some American blacks don't believe what the Bible says. Many of us do. The prophecy says one-third of our people shall believe and be saved. Two-thirds of our people shall die through thermonuclear fire, according to Zechariah, chapter 13. Okay, that's what the prophecy says, that. All right, believe in about a couple of months and weeks, this kind of a show will be brought back here on GH Radio 1. And um, we like, on behalf of the production crew and team, the cameraman, and then Brother Michael in the East Studios here, and then my executive producer, DJ Agulogu, yes, <laughs> and uh, Massimo, all of them on behalf of them, and to you, who made a time for about an, uh, an hour, I mean two hours, right, on the network, and then some few minutes, I uh, would like to uh, say we appreciate your time, and to Brother Edward, who amongst all the invitees, honored us here by coming up with his opinion and to all of you the callers who made time spend time listening to us on the radio we hope you are going to be able to throw your questions don't forget to visit the the site uh once again i would like you to repeat your website and then your contact for us before we go it's www.israelunite.org and our phone number is 718-303-9655. And I do want all your pastors to come and join the radio show and meet me when I, Lord's World Life Last, come to Ghana. I want to meet them face-to-face, scripture for scripture, line upon line, verse for verse. All right. Thank you very much. It's been an honor talking to Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United and to Michael once again for all the way from the UK. And uh, you join us here in the studio. And uh, I'd like to always say shalom. Shalom. Right. <laughs> Have a good time. Right. That was uh, Bishop Nathaniel. Thank you very much too again and uh, to all of you. Uh, it's a pleasure and it's always uh, my pleasure to be here Thanks with you. Enough. Sometime, sometime to come. Right. Israel United. I'm Elton Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.